pretty much you know his at his size, as opposed to having an advantage at that power forward with the speed and the mismatch. Uh, so I think Travis is going he's going to be fine. Um, I put him in the starting lineup a, a couple games to uh, get a look at him with that that, that first group and to uh, see him in that small forward role. Uh, and I brought him off the bench. You know he's going to be a big part of uh, our offense. Uh, what we want to uh, see from him, the improvement, is on the defensive end of the floor. If he can def defend those wings and rebound the ball, uh, that's certainly going to help us. This would be what I think some would say is your biggest obstacle, uh -huh. as you are loaded with players, you have a ton of depth, and that would be keeping everyone happy. What did you think when Travis Outlaw came out in the Oregonian over the summer and said he would like more shots? Uh, that's okay. You know, uh, I know that uh, Travis uh, is, is a scorer and his opportunities is something that uh, it's going to be key for him to be successful out on the floor and we want to get him opportunities. Uh, that was part of the reason uh, for bringing him off the bench last year. I felt like in that second group uh, we could run plays for him, we could take advantage of his ability to score and we're going to do that whether he's in the first unit or the second unit. It's much easier to do that uh, with the second group uh, than the first because in that first group last year we had Brandon and LaMarcus that uh, played with the ball. Those guys were our first and second option and um, it's very difficult to uh, run the offense through you know three people, you know three players at times and in that second group we could give him some plays and take advantage of that. This year we can do the same thing with the second group uh, with Gre adding Greg uh, to that starting unit, Lamarcus, Greg, and Brandon uh, will be the focus. Those will be those will be the guys we will play off of. And uh, when we bring guys in off the bench, Rudy, Travis will be guys that we will look to uh, put the ball in their hands and allow those guys to uh, to play if we go with that 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 lineup. So uh, when he made that comment, it really it really didn't bother me. Um, you know, I want our guys to bring their egos and, you know, you know, to the uh, arena, and we will find ways to try and put them in a position where they can be successful. Are there enough touches to go around? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, the bottom line, we're going to play basketball and we're going to play the game the right way. Uh, if you are able to uh, play with the ball and make decisions with the ball, then we're going to put the ball in, the, in your hands. If there's a double team, then move the ball. And if you have single coverage and you can score, uh, score the ball. So I think it's a simple game. Uh, you know, we'll run sets for those guys who uh, has shown that they can um, make good decisions with the ball. And we will give opportunities. You know, there will be opportunities for guys like Sergio and guys like Blake and uh, Bayless to uh, run sets and make plays and you know, the more productive you are, the, the more calls, the more times your number uh, will be called. That kind of point here leads me to the big question, Rudy Fernandez. Mm -hmm. You in the past, let's be honest, have had a quick hook for guys that on the defensive end um, haven't at times had things figure out for turnovers. There has been a short lease, even a guy like Sergio Rodriguez, and you even brought it up I mean, last week, you said this team needs to slow down, make better decisions, pushing the basketball at times has gotten us into trouble. Rudy Fernandez seems like a guy that can wow you one minute and the next minute make you pull out your hair. Do you give more leeway to Rudy Fernandez to make those type of mistakes maybe than you have some of your guys in years past? You know, a mistake is, really a mistake for me is not a mistake unless you do it twice. You know, and what we will do is show him uh, some of the decisions that he's making. No, I, I won't handcuff him and not allow him to... Uh, play his game, play the game, but uh, you know when you're making mistakes and it could be costly uh, as far as hurting the team, then you, you show that to a player and uh, you hope that that doesn't happen. You know, so quick hooks, uh, the quick hooks come when you continue to make the same mistake and uh, you know turnovers is, is a big key for us. Uh, you know, we want to value that basketball, and we want to get a shot at that basket uh, as many times as possible. And I think if we do that, 
uh, you know, we'll have a chance to win basketball games. So Rudy, play your game. Uh, you know, Sergio, play your game. Everybody, play your game. And uh, we will shape, you know, the system accordingly. Talking with Trailblazers coach Nate McMillan in studio on the fan. This would be my biggest key defensively. How much better is this team defensively? Do you have a grasp on that yet? Well, that is uh, a commitment that I'm looking for uh, from the team. You know, because you, you got to change your mindset when you're talking about the defensive end of the floor. Most of our guys who are, who are on this team and pretty much the NBA, they're offensive minded. You know, if you, if you ask, you know, what is Brandon Roy's best skill? His ability to score. Uh, if you ask, what is Travis Outlaw's best skill? His ability to score. Uh, Fry, what is his best skill? His ability to shoot the ball. Sergio, his ability to create and find. LaMarcus, his ability to shoot the ball. He can defend. Uh, you know, Joel would be more of a defense uh, defender. But most of our guys are, are uh, offensive-minded. So we want to, we don't want to take offense from them, but we want them to focus on being better defend, def defenders. And I think we can do that because they have the ability uh, to do that. So there is an emphasis on the defensive end of the floor. I think if we defend better and we rebound better, it should create easier opportunities for us. And we're not coming down and having to run a set offense as much as we did last year. I don't see any reason why we can't do that. Uh, with Greg uh, Oden being the anchor to this defense, uh, Joel being the anchor with that, with that second unit, we are bigger uh, than we were last year. Uh, we are pretty athletic. We're going to have Greg and LaMarcus, two seven-footers down in the paint. We should be a better rebounding team. Uh, we're going to have Joel and Fry, possibly Joel, Fry, Travis, with that second group. We should be a better rebounding team. So we should be able to get out and create more easier opportunities uh, you know, for our offense. But we also want to uh, be an offense that could execute in a half-court uh, half court setting. But I think it starts on the defensive end of the floor. Does Nicholas Batum have a chance to start? Yes. And, you know, we're just seeing improvement. You know, again, you know, we're talking about, you made the comment, um, allowing guys to play and, you know, tightening the rope. Uh, Nicholas is a rookie. Uh, he's, a, you know, he's, a, he's a young kid with no NBA experience. But if he can play, he'll be out there. I, I want, you know, just because he's a rookie, uh, I won't hold that against him. I think he just took people with shock a little bit, a guy that no one's talking about and a team that everyone's getting hyped but this kid, and all of a sudden, a couple practices, he's running with that first group. Well, you know, and, and I look at the bigger picture, and, you know, again, we're, we're getting excited, but we're getting excited about preseason. And most of, uh, uh, you know, the, the starters and the, the key players, main players, are not playing as much. You know, teams are... You know, playing a lot of different combinations, um, you know, throughout these preseason games. What I will look to do, uh, basically because of injury to Martel, uh, and we have to look at this, is possibly start him in a, a game or two, just to take a look at him and see what he looks like uh, with that first group. Uh, we probably will have to look at Rudy possibly being in that uh, starting unit and playing Rudy, uh, Roy, and, and Blake. Can, know, so can Brandon play the small forward at all? Well, you know, I think they will be listed as wings. Uh, he doesn't necessarily will be the small forward. I think they'll be wings because a lot of times Brandon, uh, the best defender, two or three, is guarding Brandon. And, you know, Brandon is guarding that guy. Uh, even with Martel being in the lineup or Travis being in the lineup, uh, Brandon will see Bruce. He will see Artes. You know, he's going to see the best defender. And whoever that other wing uh, is will see, you know, the weaker defender between the two. So, yeah, Brandon can play the small full position or, the, you know, the, 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 the other wing. And I think we'll be okay. All right. We've got to catch you, Louis. Final question. Seattle, you're Mr. Sonic. No Sonics. 
What do you think of that market up there? you think the Blazers can filter into that market with, with your ties and Brandon Roy's ties? Well, I, you know, I think if we play basketball 